so good afternoon. Uh, today we will see um, model deployment and uh, API development using uh, Flask, right? So <clears throat> you, you, you have uh, a machine learning model and that you want to uh, give it to someone or uh, for a company, uh, what you can do is uh, you can uh, create an API for them to use uh, your machine learning algorithm uh, or deploy it uh, somewhere in the cloud, right? So let's first see the, the theoretical part and then uh, later we will have a demonstration. So we will uh, introduce what uh, uh, deployment is and why we need to deploy models and some strategies for uh, deploying our ML models and some infrastructures or tools for deployment and the steps in uh, model deployment. And we will have um, a section where we can discuss about API development using Flask. Uh, finally, we will have uh, some conclusion uh, points. So uh, an ML model uh, deployment is a process of integrating your model into an existing uh, production environment where it can provide uh, predictions or uh, some um, value based on uh, a new data, right? That, that's a particular example, uh, a prediction. It, it can be a classification or uh, anything that you want to accomplish using your uh, ML model. So uh, uh, deployment is a, a, uh, a phase where the model is actually used to solve uh, real world problems, right? So the, the deployment, uh, it involves taking a trained ML model and making, making it available for uh, use in a live environment. Uh, it can be in the uh, premises where you work or it can be in the cloud. And that can be accomplished in different forms, um, like using API or developing a web application or an uh, embedded system, right? So we can uh, deploy it in uh, different ways. Um, why, why do we need to deploy our models? Uh, the, the first is uh, we are trans transforming the model into uh, a usable tool, right? Which means end users will use your application so that they can solve uh, a problem. So this will um, allow the model to be integrated in applications that end users interact with such as recommendation systems or e-commerce websites, right? Those are uh, deployed uh, ML models, right? And the other one is for automation, which means uh, we can automate decision-making process that we are uh, previously doing manually. That means it will increase efficiency and decrease human error, right? Uh, for example, uh, we can deploy a model that um, automates uh, loan approval or rejection, right? Uh, using the, the credit scoring models, right? So we can deploy those models uh, so that the uh, approval or rejection process for uh, a loan application can be handled by um, the model. And the other one is a business process. That means um, we, we can embed uh, our models for uh, productive analytics into, um, I mean, to, to enhance uh, decision making with uh, data driven insights. For example, a sales forecast can inform inventory management, uh, marketing strategies, and financial planning, right? We can use uh, those models for our business process, right? Uh, the, the other one is scalability. 
uh, which means uh, you, you, your model might be a good model that others can use or that you can uh, use it for uh, different uh, branches of your company, right? Which means we have, we have to reach a large number of users, right? So um, it, we, we, we want to reach the globe. So the deployed models can serve users worldwide, regardless of the geographical location, uh, by leveraging the, the web services and cloud platforms, uh, we can scale uh, our uh, model into to, to reach uh, the globe. Uh, the other one is handling increased demand, which means deployment on a scalable infrastructure like cloud platforms will allow you to handle increased loads and server uh, serve more users simultaneously without uh, performance uh, degradation. Uh, if your model uh, is something that many people are going to use, uh, which means uh, there, there, there is um, a high demand, and to handle that, uh, you need to deploy it on, uh, on the cloud. Um, yeah, and multi-channel access, that means your model can be accessed through various channels uh, using web apps or mobile apps or APIs or any embedding system, right? Uh, so that you can reach a, a, a broader user um, in general. Uh, the other one is efficiency, uh, which means uh, real-time prediction, right? Uh, when when data comes in, uh, you need to do uh, a real-time prediction so that you can um, detect uh, like fraud, right? Uh, so this enables you real-time data processing and prediction, which is um, crucial for time-sensitive applications like fraud detection, right? And the other one is a resource optimization, uh, which means uh, when you deploy your model, um, the, those automated tasks that would uh, require significant human resource and time uh, will be optimized, right? For example, uh, predictive maintenance models can schedule uh, maintenance only when necessary, which uh, and reduce downtime and maintenance cost. So deploying uh, has an advantage for uh, resource optimization. And the other advantage is consistency. That means it ensures consistent and repeatable decision making based on the, the model's logic, uh, removing variability introduced by human judgment, um, and this is particularly important in applications like medical diagnosis or legal decision support systems. Um, yeah, um, am I still audible? Good. And all right. Um, start? Hi. Yes, Yapsra. Oh, that, that was at the beginning. Okay, sorry. Um, yeah. So those are some of the reasons why we need to deploy uh, our machine learning model, right? Uh, then uh, strategies for uh, deployment, uh, there are basically two. Uh, the first one is uh, batch deployment. Uh, batch deployment, it's used to make predictions on batch of data at a scheduled uh, interval, right? Uh, uh, a data will come in and we'll give some batch and then we predict and when a, another comes in, we, we give the uh, data for the model and we do prediction, etc. So we, we do the prediction uh, using batch. Um, uh, example like customer segmentation or even fraud detection. Uh, its advantage is it's easier to implement and 
suitable for non-time sensitive applications. Um, actually, this might not be a good example uh, for batch uh, deployment, crowd detection, um, it, it, it's time sensitive, right? If a transaction is happening in real time before it passes the system, uh, it's 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 good to uh, detect that crowd uh, in time. Uh, so the advantage of the batch deployment uh, is um, uh, it's easy to implement, and its disadvantage is uh, it's not suitable for real time applications. Uh, the, the other one is real time development. Uh, I mean, develop, uh, deployment which means uh, models provide instant uh, predictions on incoming data. So uh, we have to um, have uh, a real-time deployment, uh, which means when data comes in, it, it will just go through the model and get the outputs. It's like a stream of data, um, from the source up to the uh, from the uh, up to the end, right? Uh, the examples are real time recommendations, uh, dynamic pricing, uh, even fraud detection. Uh, it's disadvantage. I mean, uh, its advantage is it provides immediate insights and actions, and the disadvantage is it requires robust and scalable infrastructures to have um, a real time uh, deployment. Uh, so these are the two strategies that we can use for uh, deployment. <clears throat> uh, infra infrastructure for deployment, uh, it's very important uh, to choose the right in infrastructure for deploying your ML models. Uh, that, that's because um, we need to ensure performance, scalability, uh, security, uh, cost effectiveness, latency, et cetera. There are uh, some points we need to consider uh, before we choose uh, the infrastructure that we're going to use. Uh, so the, the, there are basically three. Uh, you can deploy your uh, ML locally. That means uh, you can host your machine, um, your model on a local service uh, server within the organization. Uh, and this approach provides you full control over the uh, hardware and where uh, software environments, which means its its advantage is that uh, it's secure, um, but the uh, disadvantage is it it's not scalable. I mean, it's not scalable, which means you can't reach out uh, more people outside of your uh, local host and it's very costly to um, get the service the the hardware etc uh, yeah so it, it depends on your uh, ml model and for what are you going to use that model and the other one is cloud-based uh, cloud cloud-based uh, development it involves using third-party cloud service providers like AWS or GCP or Microsoft uh, Azure to host and manage the uh, ML models. Uh, the the, the, the cloud-based deployment, uh, the advantages are um, it's less costly than uh, the pre on-premise one. Uh, the disadvantage is uh, data security. You are, when you uh, host your uh, model on a cloud, uh, you are passing your data for a third party. So there might be um, a data privacy issue. And uh, the, the other one is the combination of these two, which is called the uh, hybrid deployment that combines on-premise infrastructure with a cloud-based cloud resources that will allow uh, data and applications to be shared between them. And this approach leverages benefits of both environments. Uh, yeah. Uh, 
uh, the, the steps in model de uh, deployment. The first one is you need to train and model your evaluation. Uh, that means training and evaluation. You already know those what they mean. And the second one is model serialization. That means you need to convert your model into a format that can be uh, easily served or loaded to um, a server, like uh, a pickle format, uh, etc. And tools for that, uh, we will use a pickle or joblib uh, for model serialization. That's just training the model and after evaluation, if you are um, confident that your model is doing good and you want to use it for a real world application, then uh, you have to save it. So model serialization is just nothing, saving the, the, the model that you have. Uh, once you, you have the, the model uh, the, or the serialized model, then you can serve it uh, using different techniques like using apis or using uh, containers and uh, you can also use uh, platforms uh, for serving your uh, model uh, and the fourth step in deployment is monitoring and maintenance which means we have to track the model performance over time and also maintain the model which means uh, it might be necessary to um, retrain the model uh, using new data sets uh, that are gathered for uh, for some time. So these are uh, the steps that we uh, follow for uh, model development training, model serialization, model serving, and then uh, monitoring and maintenance. Uh, are there any question? or a concept that I can clarify more on model de is, is it clear? Okay, Absra, Nadia, is it clear? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, good. Um, uh, next is API development. Uh, as I said earlier, uh, once we train our model uh, and serialize it, we have to uh, serve it, right? So uh, an API is one way of serving uh, your uh, uh, model. So an API is an application program interface. Uh, it's just a set of rules and protocols for building and interacting with uh, software applications, which means we're going to develop an API uh, and want to integrate it with uh, other infrastructures or uh, software applications. That's what uh, means. It will connect your model with other services. So it allows uh, different software systems to combine and to communicate with each other. That, that's the purpose of API. Uh, there are two types, uh, the web APIs and the library APIs. The, the web APIs, they, they access via HTTP protocols uh, like REST and GraphQL, uh, where the, the library APIs, uh, those are function calls in, the, in, a, in a programming language, right? Um, the, its importance is, as we said, its integration. It will connect different software systems and services. That's the purpose of uh, an API. Uh, and its efficiency, it facilitates reuse of functionalities, right? And scalability, it allows uh, developers to scale systems uh, efficiently, which means you can deploy uh, or you can uh, create an API that can be used by anyone in the world, right? Uh, and uh, it handles innovation uh, because when you when you develop an API, uh, you are uh, developing uh, a service or a new application. 
that can be used by other people, right? So that creation is an innovation. It's your way of serving your model or um, not necessarily a, a machine learning model. It can be anything serving uh, your, uh, we can say it, products to other people using the, the, the API. So when you do that, you are, uh, you are you are doing an innovation because your way of creativity uh, will allow um, others to get your product. Uh, so these are some of the importance of uh, APIs uh, and if API development lifecycle. It starts with planning, right? You need to define your objectives. What are you going to solve? Uh, what problems will the API solve? Right. Uh, once uh, you have done that, you need to identify resources that you are going to use or what data or functionalities will be uh, exposed uh, uh, through the API. And then you design the API, which means you have to choose if you are using uh, RESTful API or uh, GraphQL API, you, you need to define the endpoints, the methods, and the data structure. So you need to design the API. We will see some of them. Uh, the, the next is uh, you design, which means uh, you have to uh, do the specification, which means uh, API description uh, for uh, the API. Uh, you have to decide on what authentication mechanisms are you going to use because there are different authentication mechanisms and uh, rate limiting, which means um the api is as we said earlier it's an http protocol which means uh you you can send the data and you can also request the data from the api right if you are not going if if you don't limit uh that request uh your server might be uh might not work uh, properly there might be uh, uh, an overload, right? So we need to limit the rate uh, so that we can prevent um, data abuse or server overloading, etc. And you have to do a, a documentation, right? You have to create um, a documentation for uh, developers to use, uh, how they're going to send their request, how they're going to uh, get data, you, you have to write your documentation. That's the, the design phase. Uh, the third one is development, which means you need to set your environment, uh, like the development environment and the testing environment. What platforms and tools are you going to use for your uh, development? and what tools and frameworks are you going to use for testing? Uh, we, we will see them. And once you set up that, or you, once you decide that, you, you start to code. You, you need to implement the API because APIs are just set of uh, instructions that you need to implement. So you need to implement the endpoints, uh, the business logic and the, the data access and the other one is you need to handle errors uh, in a robust way uh, so that uh, it it and i mean it function properly so you need to implement a robust error handling and uh, response mechanisms and the fourth step is testing you have to test your api uh, and that can be a unit test that means you can test individual components uh, or integration testing. That means ensuring the API works with other systems, right? And the other one is performance check. You have to check for load and stress handling. That means uh, the, the, you need to limit the uh, API, uh, et cetera. And the other one is security, uh, which means uh, authentication, authorization, and data protection. You, you also have to test those.
um, that might be uh, yeah uh, user based authentication uh, authorization and data accessing uh, and then once you have that you need to um, deploy for deployment uh, you need to have uh, SCI CD that's for continuous integration and continuous uh, not development it's deployment sorry I, I will correct that so automate uh, a deployment pipeline uh, and for monitoring you have to set up uh, logging and monitoring to track the API usage and its performance uh, the other one is versioning uh, you need to implement a version control to manage the changes and the updates. And we 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 need uh, maintenance. That means um, once you have the the API and once you released it, um, you you might have uh, some issue with with it. So now and then you have to address issues as they arise, right? And you also want to add uh, new features uh, and uh, duplicate old ones um, as needed, right? You can add new features and you can remove the, the old ones. And the other one is support. That means you have to provide ongoing support to the uh, API consumers. Um, yeah, uh, tools and technologies, uh, are there any questions? Uh, if you have any question, uh, either you can speak up or uh, you can uh, put it in the chat. I can I can answer it later. All right. Um, <clears throat> so for the tools and uh, technologies uh, for development, for testing, etc. Uh, for development, we have different uh, tools that we can use to uh, develop APIs. The, the first one is uh node.js and it's popular for building uh restful apis and there's django uh, it's a python based uh, web framework uh, for uh developing apis and there's flask flask is a lightweight python framework uh, there is fast api and there are others uh, those are some of the uh, development tools uh, and for API documentation, you 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 can try Swagger or OpenAI uh, for uh, designing and documenting the RESTful API. And uh, there is an IDE for uh, GraphQL. Uh, and there is Postman, a tool for testing your APIs that I'm I'm going to show you. And for authentication and authorization, uh, there is uh, OAuth 2.0, that's a standard for access and uh, delegations. And there's also JSON Web Tokens. Um, those are compact URL, URL safe means for of presenting claims. Uh, and there's also uh, API keys. Those are uh, simple ways to secure your APIs. Uh, I think you, you you have came across with those, right? Um, when, when you send a request to uh, an API, uh, if it is authentication based, uh, you need to have some kind of token. Uh, so the JWTF has its own. Uh, it, it it's integrated with um, Django and react that's node js uh, etc and you know uh, what api uh, like is in uh, for example open ai that's uh, gpt uh, and in github they are, they are everywhere right to access uh, someone's api uh, you need to generate api keys from their website and then using those APIs, you can access uh, their data and their functionality. So that's uh, authentication and authorization. And for testing tools, there is uh, JUnitest, that's for uh, Java. 
and PyTest, that's for Python, and for Postman. Uh, Postman is for manual and automated API testing. And there is uh, a new man that's command line tool for uh, running uh, Postman collections instead of using the a web framework of Postman or the uh, desktop application, you can also use the command line. Uh, so in conclusion, uh, model deployment is a crucial step in uh, machine learning life cycle. Uh, turning, that, that's like turning your theoretical models into uh, practical applications. That's uh, very important model deployment. So by understanding the different deployment strategies, infrastructure options and tools, uh, organizations can effectively um, operationalize their ML models to drive uh, business value. Uh, so API development is it's a dynamic and evolving field uh, re requiring a balance of technical skill designing thinking and user centric approach uh, because it's innovate it, it's a, it's a, an innovation when when you develop an api you are um, innovating something and that requires uh, some technical skills uh, uh, designing thinking and uh, user centric approaches so by adhering to best practices and le uh, leveraging modern uh, modern tools, uh, you can create a robust, scalable, and uh, secure APIs that uh, drive uh, business value, that drive business value. Yeah, um, that's for the theoretical part. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, please ask. Is it clear? Okay, um, for demonstration, um, uh, I, I think you already saw the, the first API. So today we're going to use Flask, right? I will show you this one first and then um, all right. Uh, so to uh, let, let's start from the from the uh, folder structure. <clears throat> we are not going to start it from scratch because it, it takes time. You have to install the, the, the package, etc. So uh, basically, what our objective is to develop a machine learning model, right? We need to train it, evaluate it and then uh, implement endpoints for uh, serving the, the model, right? So what we'll do is uh, I have a model folder, uh, data preparation that's before training the model, right? Once we prepare the data, um, you do the data processing that you will do, and then uh, you will have the independent and dependent variables. Uh, this is for uh, prediction uh, using a social ad, uh, social media ads uh, to predict purchase, right? Uh, we will have uh, the age, the gender, uh, salary, and then uh, we predict if those people can buy uh, a product or not that that's the, the 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 problem we want to solve so the i have the data here i'm not sure yeah so user id uh, we have gender and age uh, estimated salary and purchased right so we want to uh, predict this column that's zero not purchased one purchased right uh yeah that's that's the problem that we want to solve and the, the training once we prepare the data the 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 training is i'm gonna since it's 
a prediction we can use uh, Gaussian NB, knife base, and decision tree classifier, and random forest classifier, right? Um, you, you already know this. The, the main objective here is how to create the APIs uh, using Flask, right? So once I have this, uh, I will start from the back end. That's developing the endpoints, right? So uh, here I have the app.py, right? Uh, we need to install these requirements for the app. We need Flask, uh, Pandas, Scalern, uh, Joblib for saving the uh, model, uh, Flask course for allowing data to multiple data to uh, move from server to uh, front end, and Seaborn for, uh, I, I think, for getting the metrics, uh, blah, blah. Uh, once we install those, we need to write the APIs, right? And we will import the, the modules. And this is where the Flask part starts, right? I have to define my app by saying app is equals to Flask underscore, underscore, name, underscore, underscore. And then we enable the uh, CRS uh, for all routers. And then uh, this is this is just uh, this I, I'm create um, I'm gonna upload the data from the front end, right? Uh, so that's where it will be. The uploaded data will be saved in the uploads file, uh, and we're going to write some uh, endpoints. So the 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 endpoints will be. First, to get um, a file, right? So I will have an endpoint called upload or upload file, right? And I have to write a function for that. So just know that we're going to have one endpoint, which is called upload, and the method is for post, right? We're going to send uh, data uh, to the server. Right, and then once I do that, uh, using that those data, I want to train it. Right, so I will have another endpoint called train. So the the um, uh, forward slash is uh, the like the home page, right, or the root route, and then forward slash train will be. Uh, a route. This is a decorator for URL routing, right? And then we define the function. We will come to the, the, the function. And then once we train them, uh, we have to predict, right? So I will have another endpoint, which is predict. And that, that will be uh, sending data to the, the, to the front end. Uh, and then we, we run the app. So let, let's see the, the functions one by one, right? So for the upload, uh, it, this one is for, 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 the, pro, for the, the front end uh, in React. I, I, will, I will maybe come to this one later. Instead, let's, let's do this one. So what, what does the train uh, endpoint does is it will get a data it will get uh, a JSON data from the front end that I uploaded. So I have it here as a data, right? And using that data, uh, I will get the file pass because this data will contain the data and uh, some metadata, which is a file pass, right? Once I have that file pass, since it's in the uploaded folder, I will call the uh, data uh, pre-processing by passing the file, uh, the file pass. So the, the pre, 
data processing is inside uh, inside the models. That means it's inside here. So this will get the file pass and read the CSV data that I that I uploaded, and then uh, I do hot encoding for the gender to be male one to uh, male one zero female, and then. Uh, we drop the user ID because we don't need this for the prediction. Uh, and then we, we will drop the gender again, and then we concatenate uh, this hot encoded uh, data with the data frame. And then I get my features uh, and then the, the Y, that's the purchased column, right? And it will return the X and the Y, right? the dependent and the independent variables. Uh, once I got those data, uh, then I can call, uh, train and evaluate uh, the models. That's this one. Inside, inside the, the models, there is a train model, and that, that's where we get this function. So it will call this function, right? So we split our data and then we scale it using the standard scaler and then we select a model. Uh, and then we we save that both the a scalar, the scalar data and also the, the model that we train. After we predict, we compute the accuracy and then we saved it. That's uh, job leave dot dump the model with this uh, model name, <clears throat> where it's inside models. Uh, it will be it will be here, and it will return the accuracies. And this is for the the for the front end. I uh, that means I'm obtaining the accuracies for each models and then i just just unify it uh, so that i can uh, serve it in the front end right similarly we do the prediction we do we write the uh, predict route right so once we do that we have two options uh, actually in any option now our api is ready we just need to uh, test it, right? To test the, if this API works or not, what we can do is we can use um, or develop a, a front end uh, using basic HTML or uh, other front end frameworks like um, React. Uh, the other one is using Postman. We can test the uh, the the API that or the endpoints that I have right the the predict the train and the upload right so um uh, yeah where is it uh let me open postman what is this uh you can install it post you can install postman or you can use the the web-based uh postman it, it doesn't matter so before i uh, test here uh, i have to run my application right both the front end and the back end uh, let me do this one okay, here uh, here i'm inside the front end uh, actually i don't need to run the front end because i'm going to use um, postman uh, inside the backend, I need to run the app.py. So what I can say is app3.py. Uh, now it's running on this URL, right? This is what we need to test. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, HTTP uh, localhost 5000. This is where our APIs are. So if you come here uh, and do this, 
uh, as you can see, it says 404. That means uh, this does, doesn't exist. 404 means not found because we didn't define uh, a route for the, uh, the for the route. Uh, as you can see, there is no route for the only for the forward slash, right? That's upload, etc. Which means I can I can write it up dot route, and then uh, that's the the route, and we can pass the method, right? Uh, method is not get; it can be post. Right, and I'm gonna call this. This is a decorator, right? Uh, I'm gonna call it index. That's like the the home page. What I want to do is I want to return like this one. Return a justify uh, a, a message or um, a hello or lead, or you can write here print. Uh, Hello world, right? So this is one in the point. That's the the forward slash, right? What it does is it will return or serve the the string hello world to the front end. That's that's what it is. Uh, now since I have this route, if I send again, as you can see, I have this data, right? Or what you can do is if you go to a local host, uh, 5,000, not one, 5,000. Uh, oh, uh, let, me, let me just copy it. Uh, that one, uh, this method is not allowed for uh, a request URL. What? Uh, did I say post or gate? It's post. Oh. POST. Actually, it, it shouldn't matter. Post gate, just to make sure. Um, yeah, um, we, we can see that the message here. Message, that's hello or it, right? Um, now, if I go to uh, forward slash predict, uh, actually train first. Uh, for the train, uh, since I already have the data, it, it will train them. So if I send uh, internal server error, that, that's because it didn't get the, 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 the models. So maybe I need to say upload. Uh, no file uh, apart. Uh, okay, header. Uh, okay, for Postman, we can't upload the data here um what about since i already saved the the predict should work because i have predict uh no i i think uh uh for postman I, I will i will show you the, the other one um so once we have the 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 back end ready the the next step is a front end for the front end you can use uh, as a simple html or you can use a uh, react app so for 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 this one uh, i used a react app uh so if I simply say npm start, uh, it will start the server. And uh, we will have this page, right? So here we can browse, right? 
when when I click this, it's calling the uh, upload route or upload function. This function, right? So what it will do is it will get the data and it will send the file pass, right? Once I have the file pass, I can uh, call the train model. Uh, so where is the data? I think this this one, the social network at CSV. If I click this one, now it's successfully added, right? Once I have the data, now I, I can train the models, the, the three models that uh, I want to use, right? So if I do that, uh, I have the decision tree with 84% uh, accuracy and Gaussian naive bees with 94% and random forest with 90% uh, accuracy. So the, the, the three models are trained. Now I can use them. Uh, right. Uh, since they are already saved, I can serve them using the uh, a prediction route. So you can select, and then you 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 uh, can uh, pass the data and predict the the, the value. Right. So uh, let me open the data first. I think. I know it's a lot to to take in, but. It's it's a good practice for you to start implementing front end. Um, so here we have uh, let, let's take this one female, uh, twenty six, uh, eighty thousand salary. Uh, so now let's use that. Age is twenty eight, salary is eighty thousand, and she is a female, right? For this one, she, she she didn't buy or that that's the 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 data, so it should predict it correctly. So if we do that, the the prediction is zero. The prediction is zero. Uh, but if you go down here, uh, we have a female, forty eight years old, with twenty eight twenty nine thousand uh, estimated salary. That that person buys the product. So this should. Uh, uh, predict that so the the age is 48 and salary is 29,000 and she is also a female so if you click predict as you can see it's true uh, you can change the models right uh, still no change because they 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 predict it correctly uh, so that's how you serve your API uh, yeah what else uh okay um let me just show you the the for you for the fraud uh, detection i have implemented that too this is i think this should allow us to check All uh, right, that's API development. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> uh, here I have only one route. It's for predict, right? Because I already read the data, prepare everything, right? And I use only uh, one model uh, for this one. Uh, I, I saved the model, I saved the uh, scaled data, and I used that for prediction, the model.predict, by, by passing uh, input data from the uh, API endpoint or from the front end, it will, uh, it will predict. It's only one route, which is predict, right? So I, I think this is, uh, this will allow us to test it on Postman. Uh, front end, uh, npm start, that's fine. And this has to be the back end. Control C, clear. Uh, Python 3 up. 
now I have a different one. Uh, this is Ada Innovation Inc. Uh, for the fraud detection. Um, you pass the purchase value, the source, browse, sex, age, IP address, uh, sign up time and purchase time, and it will predict if it's fraud or not, right? Uh, let's first uh, check it on Postman. Uh, I have the, the route, it, it's the same route, but it's predict, right? The, we need to be sure, predict, yeah. So if I send this, uh, the view in the console, uh, why is it not connecting? Did, oh, it's, it, it's running. The, the backend is running. It, it will finish soon. Um, so the, the most important part is how you write your uh, route. Uh, then the function is just your way of thinking. Now it's, it's finished, it will be accessible in postman. Sending a request. Shouldn't take that long. Waiting to start. Maybe I should stop this one. All right. Uh, Why is it taking so long? Um, let me let me stop it. Don't say. Maybe it's confused. Um, I I think I need to close this one also. Let me do that. Uh, okay. So I need the URL. This one. Copy. And if if I send the request now it will not work because we don't have uh, a slash route or the index route. What we have is predict. And inside the body, uh, it's, uh, all right. Why is it none? Uh, raw data. Not JSON. Okay. So here we have to we have to um, pass the model name and the features that we're going to use as an input, right? So what we can do is we can create a dictionary, and let me see. Um, Uh, predict data uh, data preprocess. No, not this one. Oh, no, these are the notebooks. Sorry. Mm, okay, index columns. Uh, I, I think they, there is what you call it features. I, I, I change it a little bit. Um, uh, le, le, let's just try them. I don't think it's gonna work, but 
Um, pay processing. Purchase value. Uh, no. Six. Source. Browse. Six. Uh, country. No, IP address. I need the IP address. Um, yeah. I had it earlier. Okay. Uh, we need to pass the 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 features and the value. Uh, we have the browser. And six. And the IP address, not a country. Um, and we also need a timestamp, I think. Um, I, I have changed the code. That that's that's uh, a problem. Uh, let me just show you the front end. That that's much easier. Uh, npm npm start. Uh, so for the detection, uh, you need to pass this, and then it will predict if this transaction is fraud or not, right? So the uh, purchased value, uh, uh, I think we can take one from the data. Mm, purchased time. Uh, with user purchase value, there is 64. Uh, I want this one to predict it as one, as fraud, right? So that's 31. Uh, 31. And the source, which is source, is SEO. SEO. A uh, browse is Chrome and mail M for mail, and then we have the age that's 36, and uh, an IP address. Uh, let's copy this one and time for sign up first uh, sign up time that would be this time uh, uh, let, let's let's just use 2024 um, 06 uh, date 12. 10 zero, 0 so i can use that's the sign up time 2024 uh, sorry 24 and 06 12 it, it should be in the same day after maybe 10 minutes right so this should be uh, i'm not sure this dates uh, uh, it says it's not fraud, but the, the, the data is fraud. As you can see, it's one, right? It's fraud. Uh, so we, we need to get this time correctly. So the sign up time might, might affect it. Uh, but the difference 32 and then 0, 01. Let's make it 11. And sat num. Yeah. Purchase value, it, it looks small. 
Yeah, um, anyway, so this this is how you set uh, your um, API or your model. Uh, I will I will share the code on Google Drive. And if you have any questions, please ask. Otherwise, we can call it for a day. Um, yeah, this one is a long one. Uh, is, is it clear, Nadia? If you have any doubts, please. Um, all right. All right. Have a good evening. Bye.